All righty. Hello, everybody. My name is Ron, and I do not know how to use email. <laughs> my presentation is on my desktop computer four hours away from here. Password protected. I only know the password. So we're, we're going to wing it. Um, so um, everything in our lives nowadays is marked by COVID. And inventory was no exception for our library. We shut our doors on March 18th for COVID. Our board was gracious enough to continue pay for everyone. We felt guilty taking money for nothing. So we have a huge building and only six people. We came in to work anyway. And we decided since um, we needed to be spread apart and an inventory would take us to all corners of the building, we decided to do our first ever inventory. We had not done one in six years. Um, we did the full inventory in January 2014, right before we migrated to Evergreen and had not done one since, um, mainly because I didn't know how to do it. Um, and the previous versions of Evergreen, it was not as easy as it has evolved to become. So, like Mickey said, you know, decide... There are many reasons why you should do an inventory frequently. Anybody who's been in libraries know those inanimate books grow legs and walk off. And you're not going to know they've walked off without doing an inventory. You might stumble upon them accidentally if someone asks for them. Other than that, you're not going to know. Um, especially bigger library systems, but even this one as small as my library with only seven of us, books get lost. Um, by patrons and marked loss by your frontline staff, that doesn't trickle back to collection development or administration to know, hey, maybe we should be replacing that book. Um, and there again, there's another frontline staff issue. Um, we went to pull a book for the hold list. The book's not there. We don't know that it's lost. We don't know that it's been stolen. It might be in repair somewhere in your building. Um, so that somebody marks it missing, but never follows up to track it down. So this, the inventory is a good place to start with that. Um, the best thing about uh, doing inventory in Evergreen is it's low cost. And by low cost, I mean no cost. <laughs> it is your staff time only. Um, I'm doing some record clean out from about 15 years ago. And I found my paperwork from when I joined Fall at Destiny. And we had to buy a special dedicated handheld scanner to do inventory in Fall at. We used that thing about three times and it cost us $1,000. Basically with Evergreen, what you're using is your handheld scanners and computers that you already have. So, um, Where I suggest you go first, and there again, we have all of our handy dandy little templates and reports here. You go in templates. Wow. Ah. Boy, there are a lot more templates on there than I recall seeing before. Are you on Mickey's computer? Because he's seen all I'm logged in as um, me. So, okay, so I don't have nearly all of these. So what you're looking for is you're looking for Equinox. Your general templates. Oh, there we go. That is not correct. Yeah, you're on Mickey's computer, yeah. so that's why. Okay. Yeah. So it's your workstation, but then. Okay. Retro. So go in our shared folders, our templates, ME reports. So you're just going to turn that arrow beside that. Library collections and library lists. And you'll see the very second thing on here is inventory list. So just check that in your, you know, they've already designed the template for you. You want to create a new report from that. 
So you we're do going have to have the correct uh, permissions to run reports. And if you've ever you if you are scared of this report because you used it in the past and it was really icky, it's been improved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's no there's no call number range that was really hard to use uh, uh, earlier. So so I've dated this. Um, Today's date, and this is going to be the start, starting inventory. I have a handy dandy inventory folder to put it in. I, of course, don't want all y'all stuff. I'm just looking for my stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Add there. Shelving locations. There again, I'm even though I'm logged in as myself, I'm on another computer. Typically, this is going to be just your shelving locations. Okay. And what you can do is click one of them and do a control all and add all of those. It's not doing. You will add all of those and they will pop up right down here in this location. And it could be there's just too many. It's not going to load. Oh, they did. They did. Okay. I, I, I've got. Okay, I've got an output that I can run already. I can run already. So. Oh my gosh. And you really want. There again, click on one thing in the item status and add all of them, because no matter what status it has been labeled in your library, you want to know where it is. Start modifier. Um, really, there again, I like for this starting inventory, add all of them. And like Kate said, we're not going to run this report. We will be here all day. But what this is, this is what we used to call a shelf list report in my old ILS. And you can send this out with your staff, if you've tinkered with the output correctly, you can send this out with the staff if they have nothing to do or you're just annoyed having them at the desk. Send them out with this list and say, put the shelves in order. Um, we used to do that a lot more with our old ILS. Um, we just have the, the shelvers wing it nowadays. Okay, so outputs, I'm gonna go to one of my old reports. Can I ask a question? Yes. So if you're if you're running all those shelving locations on that particular day, you need to be pretty quick at this done. Could you just run what you think you could accomplish in a day? We're going to do that too. Okay. I just think it's a good idea to have this basic the baseline beginning shelf list. Um, you know, you could take that and really put the shelves in order first before your inventory. That's not as vital in this in Evergreen, um, our old ILS wanted your shelves in perfect order. And if you didn't have them, it would tell you that, you know, this book is two books out of place. Right. And and we did our inventory by seeing Yeah. 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 I also oh, cannot type I evidently. It. <laughs> okay, I'm not authorized to get reports out of my own reports folder. <laughs> That's sad. Ooh, send in a help ticket to Equinox. <laughs> That's what you do. So what this will give you is it will give you a, a giant spreadsheet in Excel. Um, smaller libraries, I think I'm insane for saying Excel, who wants to buy you know, a $30 a month subscription to be able to use Excel. You can convert it for Google Docs. You can use an open office solution, you know, like open office and accomplish the same things. Um, with that baseline beginning inventory list, you know, range it, you know, um, 
by I, I like I would like to arrange it by my cert modifiers, my shelving locations, then by alpha order within the call number, then even fine tune it down to alpha order by author within the call number, and that gets you an ordered shelf list. So as Terry suggested, if I if this was the list I was working with, yeah, you'd have to be really, really quick on your inventory. Um, we did, we had about 50,000 items in the library. We were closed and did nothing but six hours a day of inventory. It still took us two weeks. Um, just because we only had one laptop we could take out to the stacks. So we ended up bringing the books to the circulation desk to physically inventory. Yeah. But don't let that scare you because what you're going to do is whatever date you start inventorying a section is just what date you're going to refer to back in the report for that section. You can do fiction in March. You could do children's in April. You could do audiovisual in May. You're just going to reference the reports from the date you did the inventory. So how do we do the inventory? So Ron, I have a question. Why, why do you suggest having the list to reference from and then run a different report, which is the same report? I, I think it is kind of doing double work, but I'm old school enough that I still have a paper shelf list, y'all. I have a card catalog with paper cards in it in order of how the books are supposed to look on my shelves. Uh, so would it work? Would it uh, that in general? Would you think it would? If I just ran one, you know, my human aisle fictions, it would work just the I, same way. I just did that, and I worked from that report. I would yes be okay. Yes. Okay. So you have decided what section you're working on. Um, really get a game plan before you do that, um, so you don't end up skipping a section or doing a section twice. Um, this is a royal pain to do, and nobody wants to do any work that they don't have to. Um, you know, you can look at your library and go physically, you know, east to west, like we did. Um, you can say we're going to do all of the kids first, then young adult, then adult, audiovisual last. Um, we decided our languages, our 400s, was the smallest section. We did that one first because it had the fewest things checked out, and we wanted some immediate success. It was our first time. We wanted to see how this was going to look. So we're ready to start the inventory. Oh, a calling question already. <laughs> Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> So this little um, check-in modifiers down here is very important. You see little orange X's on everything. So you get down to update inventory. You want that to be a, a green X on your update inventory, and you want this to show. Put your cursor in your barcode box and start scanning a section. Like I said, we did our 400s, um, which was maybe a couple of hundred books. Our languages section is not that big. Reports. Not that it's going to let me run one, but um, you can see on my inventory. You know, all the different sections we did. We did our young adult on April 7th. We did fiction on April 9th, young adult on April 10th. So when is that report going to show now that you've scanned the books from the show? It's going to do a comparison and show you what's the same. I wish it could I wish I could show you an output. We'll try this one, see if it will let me. I don't think so. Nope. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. No, that's not it. Won't it show if it's checked out, if it's missing, or if it's there? Yes. It's just, it's a lot. Okay, so like I said, because I don't know how to use email, we're just going to wing this. Go into this report template that we did before. I swear to God, y'all, I am usually much more organized than this. <laughs> Or at least I don't let my crazy show. Okay, we go back to ME custom reports, collections, lists. Go to that inventory list. 
create a new report from it. So I'm going to say 400s inventory. <laughs> I can't email and I can't type. And I'm going to put today's date on this. I want that in my inventory report. Like I said, I only want my stuff. I want everything added. Since I'm doing my 400s, they are strictly books. I really don't know that your, your self modifier is a huge concern there. For my nonfiction range, I have 400 to 499. Let's store my output in my inventory refolder, save it. Now, maybe it will let me access this one since I'm creating it. There you go. No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you type in your login and password right here, it, it will let you in. See how to get these off. No, it will not. <laughs> it's not the It's not the Okay. Okay, just so give me give me let, just a second, y'all. Will it let you email it to Mickey and log in it up that way? It is Okay, you're going to probably need to go to administration, go to administration, workstation, registered workstation, and change it out. And now drop your pin in now. I'm just going to have you log back in and now you can log in. Small library problems. We only have like three computers with logins. I don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so going back to my 400s inventory, I'm going to review that output. You've got your tabular output, you've got your Excel output. We'll just open it in Notepad for funsies. See how that works. No, that does not work. No, no. Won't you have to open one you've already done? I mean, you named that one, but you didn't actually do it. Yes, it is. It is a processed report. Don't you get an ink? Email to yourself and you look at it. I mean, yeah, typically... you open it up in Excel. But you, no, but you there's have no Excel on this machine. Oh, there's no Excel. What if you didn't it? Can't you still do it under the tab? Open it in tab. You can download it and open it in Sheets, the Google Sheets. Google Sheets. Yeah. Okay. Put down. Yeah. 
I'm really disappointed in myself because I really had some cute cat pictures in my. Oh. Oh. She's standing up doing a routine for us, right? Now. <laughs> no, she's not right. It's okay, y'all. I will lose sleep tonight beating myself up over oh, this. No, 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 she, no. So, so no. So on your Excel spreadsheet <laughs> that you cannot see, I close your eyes. It's an Excel spreadsheet. There is a column that says um, copy status, last date checked in. We're going to sort it by that column. Okay. So you're going to look for the dates like. Anything that was scanned 413 or after, because you might start your inventory today, um, but somebody brings in a book out of your section tomorrow, you still have that update inventory clicker turned on. Oh, oh wait, is that checking my Yes. Yeah. So really the whole time you're doing an inventory, um, you want to kind of keep this turned on because um, books that are checked in are automatically going to update in the inventory. But I don't know about you, but sometimes I get books brought back that were never checked out. Yeah. This will catch those too. But, you know, we've done our inventory on 413.23. We've sorted that Excel spreadsheet by that column that says copy status last change. Anything 413 and later day is good to go. It shows up in your inventory. Anything before 413, like say it was checked out in 2019, or it's blank because it's never checked out since you migrated, all of those items above 413.23 are missing from your shelves. So what you have to do is decide how you're going to handle those books. I'm embarrassed to admit that we did an inventory, reopened in the craziness that was COVID, and everything promptly got shoved to the side. We did nothing with our inventory. I'm playing catch up now in deleting and tracking down hundreds of items that I should have dealt with three years ago because I didn't get right on that inventory. So what you need to do is section by section, whether it's your circulation supervisor, it's a director, it's whoever with the authority goes through that list and says, this book is 20 years old and only checked out once in 20 years. There's no need to replace it, delete it. There's no need to mark it as missing or lost on your shelf. You're not going to do anything with it. Get rid of it. If you know it's something that's worth um, replacing, like I found four or five Pete the Cat books that were missing from my library. I know. <laughs> Pete the Cat, Captain Underpants, Big Nate, things like that had been yeah. missing for three years. And we were either borrowing from other libraries or the poor kids were just walking away empty handed. You know, those are the things you want to replace immediately as soon as you look at them. Go ahead and replace them. Um, if that's too big a hit on your budget to do it once, um, whether it's a selection list on Ingram or it's a cart in Baker and Taylor, go ahead and throw all those things onto a list or onto a cart and add them to your orders as your budget permits. But do something with that inventory. Um, there's no need for a book that has been lost for 10 years to still be hanging around in the evergreen system. Can you repeat that, please? <laughs> hey, Kate says one more time louder for the people in the back. If you've got a book that's been lost for 10 years, it's probably not coming back. If it does come back, it's probably not in condition to circulate. Delete that item. You can replace it. You cannot replace it. But get it out of the catalog. It, it just... There's no need to let those items hang on because what it does 
It frustrates the patron, whether it's your patron or from another library, because they won't look at that zero of one. All they'll see is it popped up in the catalog. They should be able to have it. Um, it's frustrating for staff when they go to pull for pull lists and your library has the only copy of polls on that bid. And somebody, rather than placing a hold on bid that has 33 copies of polls, has picked yours with only one copy. Your copy is lost. It goes nowhere except the hopeless holds file. So you want to get those lost books out of there to save your frustration, your patient's frustration, and everybody in this room, their frustration. Galen, um, if a library cared about it, if there was a, a bill attached to that, you know, for that item, if we deleted it, it's still on that patron. Yes. It's still billed for that patron. Yes. So you're still no reason. I mean, if you're worried about bills, you know, you if, if say this patron has two hundred dollars in bills, you don't want to let that go necessarily, but. The, deleting your item isn't going to affect that. That bill is still going to be there for your future. Yeah, just what Kate said. Um, if you delete the item, you can go into the patron's record under their fines and see the title, the circulation dates, the barcode number. Even though you deleted it, it still shows all that identifying information. And I'm a little bit bitter and possessive when it comes to my books. If you lost one of my books, I'm going to remember your name forever most of my time. <laughs> So I'm not going to go through and delete my stuff if it's going to take it out of the person's file, for their account forever. Because if they come back in, I, I want money for my book that they kept. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been doing a lot of these over the past two or three weeks, deleting those old items, and the charges still stick. Is it in social wide setting that when you delete the last item on the ledger, it deletes the record, or is that in different yeah. library? It is supposed to be consortium wide. I delete it consortium wide. When you delete the last item off of a record, it automatically deletes the entire record. Galen is busy right now. Okay. I know. I mean, <laughs> do we have do we have a consortium setting that if uh, or is this individual library? If we delete the last holding on a record, that the record automatically deletes, or does each library have to have to change that setting? Erica. Yeah. It's a library setting, but I don't remember if you have a setting. Because I think I've seen, I'm pretty sure you do have it. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm thinking it changed to a consortium wide setting because I'm no longer prompted to agree to delete that Same last. Yeah. So, and that's a good thing because that keeps down the duplicate records. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone through a pull list because I'm one of the first people there in the morning. I do the pull list. And like I said, that one record with one item, and you've got two or three other records that are identical. So, you know, I, I go and merge them because I love to merge. And, and that way... <laughs> That way, I can move that hold on to another library and then delete my item. Because um, the whole thing is about getting all of these items out to the libraries as soon as possible. Um, and if you've got that lost book lingering there and, you know, it, it sits there for a couple, three days, and then the next library, their copy's lost too, and it sits for a couple, three days. You got a frustrated patron because they needed that book two days ago, and they just forgot to come in and ask you for it. Um, so, like Terry said, do your inventory in small chunks that work for you. You know, come up with a plan of whether you're doing it geographically in your building or by uh, genres, by age levels or whatever. And then we, as you generate those reports, do something with them. <laughs> uh, when I get back to my library and I know how to use, I learned to teach myself how to use email, I will attach the presentation that has the photo demonstrations of all this. I will get that on the SCED application and send a copy to Mickey. Um, just look at it because it does have some really great step-by-step. -step. I promise you, it had really good step-by-step. -step. It was really pretty, and it had illustrations of what you're looking for on those Excel spreadsheets. Hey, Ron, there's Real a question good. in chat. There's a question in chat. There is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
also, despite you not having PowerPoint or whatever, I learned a lot. Yes, so I did as well. So, so oh, okay. Okay. yes. So Becca from Rawls County asked, um, says she currently has two wired scanners. Are there wireless scanners compatible with the ME? Yes, there are. Has everybody, anybody else found that? Or you, anybody else? Wireless scanners. Wired? Batteries. Yeah, we, we have several. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So, Amazon.com. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought a wireless scanner for $7 at a bin store. You know, Amazon returns. Yeah. And yeah, I use that thing at my desk. It is compatible with um, with Evergreen. What you're looking for, though, is um, mine. I quit using because it would either scan a barcode or it would scan an ISBN. But it would not do both of them correctly without toggling back and forth between settings. So you want to make sure that you get one that costs more than $7 like mine did. <laughs> And toggle back and forth between those symbiologies of the barcodes. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. And the prices of them have come way down. Okay. Looks like Change so that's probably just an old yeah. Right. So the answer is yes. We the it's essentially a consortium setting where if you delete the last holding, the whole bit should delete. Thank you. All righty. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you.